Hi, everyone, and welcome to Permanent Excellence. And today I've got another guest with me. I am thrilled to be joined by my very good friend and expert permanent makeup artist, trainer, speaker, product creator. There isn't a thing that Veronica Fleiss can't do. <laughs> She's <laughs> joining me all the way from the Czech Republic. And today we're going to talk about pigments, uh, the difference in pigments. We're going to um, dispel some myths and actually give you some really good advice on how you should be using pigments. Hi, Veronica. Hello, how are you? Thank you for your invite. You are very welcome. I'm, I'm in a different setup today, but we're very busy here and I've been kicked out of my studio. But as I said, the show must go on. And we know that people are hungry for this um, this information because this is what I get asked the most about on mm. my YouTube is like, what pigment should I use? What's the best? And there are different options available to people. And I feel that people don't really know the difference. Do you agree? Uh, yes, I do. I do agree a lot <laughs> on this. Um as you said, like there are so many choices these days. There are so many brands and basically like uh, some of my students or colleagues, they are just testing and testing and testing. And it's like never ending story, but they forget the, the beginning of, of everything or the basis of everything. And that is like the ingredients and the, the concentration of the pigment. If you know those two things, like you have, you know what to expect from that. I, so you don't need to test brands, you know, anymore. I fully agree. That's the thing that I think that knowledge is power. So mm. there isn't really a one size fits all. There's good things for good um, outcomes. There's bad things for, for certain outcomes. And every client is different. And it is that knowledge of what you are putting into your client that is going to make you be able to predict the healed outcome. And I think that that's missing in a lot of training. Yeah, it is. Um, I think like people forget about it. Also the sellers uh, that tell the brands they cannot advise uh, the, the students or the artists like how to work with those pigments uh, properly because as I said like different concentration it's a different type of work so different kind of pigments uh, organic inorganic also different kind of work so I think people uh, then buy some pigment and says that they are bad but there is no such a thing as the bad or good pigments they are all good and bad at the same time, but you just have to know what you have in your hands and how to work with it. Yeah, I always think that we are artists and all these things are available to us to use um, and we will get different outcomes from it. And a lot of it will depend on us, our skill level, our depth as to whether we can use something correctly. Um, so in the beginning, you'll hear lots of people be told, well, when you're a beginner, you need to use inorganics. How do you feel about that? Uh, well, like uh, all of my students are actually using organics because we teach them how to work with it properly from the beginning. And in fact, they are using the higher, the most higher concentrated pigments on the market, I believe. And uh, they know how to work with it. So, so do, you, do you think it is just teaching that skill of, of because if you're learning in, I guess, a, a basic one size fits all way, then you don't have that skill to understand. I mean, I know myself that there's, there's pigments I've used it back in the past incorrectly. You know, yeah. I've used them incorrectly and I've, I've had bad results. And I, I do understand that people, when, when people are beginners, the advice to stick to inorganics is because they're probably going to fade. So basically we're sort of saying, if you mess up, um, you probably won't have to send them for laser. It probably will fade. And <laughs> I, I guess that is a little bit of a safety, like safety protocol. Yeah, of course, like with the inorganics, they are they are fading faster. And uh, but there is like a um, a little like a bad thing about it that I personally don't like. And that is that they fade most of the times to the reddish or pinkish undertone, which is harder to remove. So this is for me like I don't like it that much. For me, it's better if if the pigment is fading a little bit grayish because this is still acceptable on the face. Um, but of course, it so much depends on how you work with it like you can mess up with the organics and inorganics as well so yeah I would say that if you're doing bad technique if your depth is really bad it doesn't really matter what you're using mm. you've messed up you, you've messed up something you can still give them scar tissue and deep pigment yeah. whatever yeah. it is looks terrible yeah I agree I agree okay so I know that you've brought out your own um brand of organics um and 
what would you say the benefits to using highly concentrated organics are? Um, well, for me, definitely a faster work. So it's it's like really, really fast. I am now preparing a video and it will be, the name of the video will be like 15 minutes eyeliner because it is possible to do it in 15 minutes, even less <laughs> in some cases. So maybe I will change the time depending how fast I will be. But anyways, yeah, it is so fast um, and you don't need to uh, layer it so much. So you basically need like three layers and that's it. That's the maximum. Because if you put there more layers, it will be more grayish. The healed results will be not very good. So this is like really fast work, less layers. And that means uh, less trauma in the skin. So also better healed results and faster healed results. So I have all of those um, advantages of the pigments. And I love it. And but of course, they also have disadvantages, and that is that they they are more uh, prone to go to uh, grayish colors, like colder colors. So uh, what I do and what I teach to my students is that there is no such a thing as perfect brown. That doesn't exist. Forget it. That doesn't exist. You always need to adjust the color according to the client's skin tone. So. Uh, the, the brand that I use, Skills Pigments, uh, they are highly concentrated organic pigments. But because I know that the, they have the tendency to heal more grayish, I always add the orange character. Always. Mm -hmm. And it just depends like how much I add. And that depends on the skin type. So I always add. So sometimes my client goes home and they have a feeling like they have a little orangey undertone in their eyebrows. But when it heals... It's beautifully brown and it will stay brown at least like one year if you know how to mix it correctly. And mm -hmm. this, this is also like another thing that um, lots of the masters uh, don't teach or they, they just tell you use this brand and that's it. But mm -hmm. that's wrong. Yeah, I, I do think that, I mean, this is something that I was talking to my friend Carla about that we've become in permanent makeup people that want to buy stuff like ready off the shelf like we look at the bottle and go this color and our clients go yes I like that color and actually that's taken away from our skill that we should have as, yeah. a, as a permanent makeup artist of being able to mix um those those colors yeah. according to our clients coloring and also predicting the healed result as well like you say your clients might go home going these are a bit orange I mean when you yeah. use these colors you kind of want that warmth when mm, the yeah because we know it's going to balance out. So it's, do you think that Instagram as well plays a big part in that people want the Insta beautiful finish yeah. rather than what's best for our clients healed? Uh, yes. And I think it's very important, like mentioning uh, and educating the clients as well, that it's not their choice of the color, but it's actually the artist's choice because they should know how that particular color will heal, how that pigment is behave in the skin and even over the time. So I always said, like, it's not your choice to my client, but I always said it's my choice and you should trust me because I know. And it is not a regular makeup that is sitting on the skin, but it's actually inside of the skin. And we all have our own uh, color, unique color uh, at, at that place with the color that we put in. So we need to take this in, into consideration when choosing and adjusting the color. So I really don't believe there is such a thing like a perfect brown or universal brow that, brown color that you can just use on anybody that doesn't exist. <laughs> So how important do you think it is to know the colorants and also also the percentages and, and the, the strength of the pigment that you're using? I think it's very important because uh, as we were saying uh, in the beginning, there's like lots of brands out there and each brand has like different unique recipe of, of that one bottle, you know? <laughs> so in each bottle, every brand has a, a different um percentage of the colorant. And for us as an artist, it's important to know uh, if we have like lower concentration or higher concentration. Because if we have lower concentration, we need to layer more pigments. We yeah. need to make more layers in order to stay in the skin. But if we have like higher concentration, 
it's right the opposite way. So that it, this is also an, another important thing. And we can do like a little, each of us, like each of us artists can do like a little test with the pigments, compare it with the, between the brands. So um, I prepared here some glasses <laughs> and I will put here- It's like a uh, science experiment. <laughs> it is. I will put here like one drop of each of different colorants. So here is the skills and I prepare some other, I will not say the name of the brand. <laughs> and I put here also one drop and I will just mix it with the spoon just for you to see the difference. I'm excited. Oh yeah. And here, look how different concentration it is. Wow. So the one that we're seeing that's lighter is going to take a lot more work. So therefore more passes, more trauma on the skin yeah. to yeah. get a similar this result. Is actually, this is actually orga uh, inorganic pigment. This is mineral, like pure mineral um, brand. And in a minute, I will show you everything will sink down and the, the, the water will be basically white again. Mm -hmm. But here we have like fully, uh, fully highly concentrated organics. And you will see like in a five, 10 minutes, it will still be the same. Yeah. Uh, and in uh, my um, experience, um, organics pigments are always higher concentration than inorganic. Always. It's always like that. So when, uh, for example, some beginner are switching from inorganics because uh, a master for a safety reason um, was teaching them to work with it. Uh, they have to realize they need to change uh, and adjust the work. So it is, I would recommend to go to some training or ask for uh, somebody who's working already with the organics in order to prevent the mistakes. Yeah, because okay. we are doing the mistakes on the clients. Oh, exactly. And, and we don't want to do that. And I think that this is, this is, I think something that trips people up. So they're told use inorganics until you until you've had a good bit of experience on your clients. Okay, now they've got a good bit of experience on the clients. Now they're wanting to branch out and just maybe have different options available to them for different kinds of clients. Maybe they want brighter colors in lips. What? But then you're saying, yeah, but don't until you're perfect. How do they know? What should they really be concentrating on, or what should be they be aware of when they want to change to organics? Like. Um... For me, it is really... Hang on one second. I pause, can I pause you? <laughs> dogs, my dog's just arrived back. So <laughs> it's got quiet, so I've been booted out downstairs and I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cut this bit out, thank you. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> okay, so what things should, if people are switching to organics, what should they be looking out for? I think the first thing they should consider is the concentration and how they work. Um, because if, if your pressure, for example, is unstable or, you know, you have like a heavy hands, I think you are not ready for organic work because work with the organic pigments requires really soft hands and really, uh, superficial work. So I think this is the first thing you should consider. Like, I, am I ready for, for this next step? Of course, it will make your work easier and faster, but are you actually ready? Because if you if you will go too deep with the organic, of course, you will have bad healed results. So yeah, this is yeah. the thing number one, I think. Yeah. So depth um, and also understanding the pigments. Do you think it's quite easy to oversaturate with um, with these yeah. these kinds of pigments? Uh, especially when you when you were uh, used to work with the minerals and for example, even like less concentrated minerals uh, and you are used to like do like many layers and do like uh, ombre effect and saturate it like really a lot because you know, like 50% will be gone after healing, then it's really like, it's really something else. And it, it takes time before you realize like, okay, I cannot do this way. So you should try to prevent th this and try the way that somebody who's experienced with working with this particular brand, for example, uh, take that advice and, and do it like he or she said, just do it like this because they mean well. It's always like uh, we mean it well because we don't want our customers to have 
but whatever. <laughs> Would you think it's probably an idea to undersaturate if you're moving into organics and just yeah. take it slowly? That's, def that's definitely the safer option. Just do less. And during the correction, you can always add more. Uh, but if you do the opposite, then you are, you know. <laughs> you can't take away, you can only add. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it is smarter choice to be a, a little like uh, less. So do a I, less work. I want to talk about um your lip pigments particularly because what I love about your lip pigments and your skills range is instead of it being oh let's pick a pretty color, it's very much about being able to mix any color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There is there is everything you need in that range, and it's not a huge range. But do you think that people really have the skill it, from their training these days to be able to mix colors like that? No. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but yeah, in most cases, I, I, I see like they are afraid um, to mix it. Um, they are lazy. Uh, they are afraid because they don't know what, what will happen with that color and stuff like that. So there are many reasons like why they don't want to mix and they prefer like prepared, you know, mixed color, already pre-mixed color. Um, but again, like if you are a true artist, you should know the colors as well, because that's what we work with. It's it's like if you are a painter and you don't know what, uh, for example, yellow with green will make, you know, so it is like you should know those basics as well. So I'm always trying to teach during my courses, especially for the lips, uh, the part of the course is concentrating on, on concentrating on the colometry, how to mix colors and, and like everything like that. It is important. And also uh, the pigmentology side of it, it's also important because, for example, the very light pink colors that has like lots of uh, titanium dioxide inside white color, for those who don't know <laughs> what that is, um, it is very tricky to work with those colors. And it's also very dangerous, like in a long good if you want to get like long time good results avoid those colors as a base colors those colors just cannot be put on the lips like a lipstick that's that's impossible it it kind of looks like using concealer on your lips doesn't it it's like trying to conceal yeah. and it doesn't age particularly well and i think that people are very keen to use uh, i've seen people using things with that 85 percent titanium on the lip yeah. it'll cover great you know it'll look great yeah yeah now uh my 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 assistant Pisha she always says like over the time it looks like this you know this cheese with, with this thing on the top I don't know the word cottage in cheese, yes. cottage <laughs> cheese. Yeah. yeah she's always making fun of it that it, exactly how it looks like over the years with those colors so if you have a color range such as your own where you can mix any color do you feel that that gives you control over that because you can control the amount of titanium in it Defin definitely. And the thing that I learned just recently uh, was very interesting because some of my girls uh, were working with a different brand. Of course, like they were testing like everybody else. And um, one of the girls here that is very close to me, she did what I uh, what I always like teach, like uh, make take some glass, put some pigment in it and look what you see and everything. And she told me like, in this particular brand, not mine, but the different one, she said, did you know that even in, in the dark colors, they have titanium dioxide inside? And I was like, really? And she, she knew because she took my pigmentology class. So she knew she, she, she was saying like, that's not actually good. I don't want to use those colors. And because she's the teacher as well, she explained, she started to explain even and show to her students, like what's the difference between the brands that some of the brands are using uh, the, the white pigment inside, even in the darker colors where you don't expect them there, you know? So it's really important again to know like what you have in your bottle. So for me, I do prefer uh, a brand that doesn't use uh, titanium dioxide that much. And instead of using titanium dioxide, because they use it for one reason, just to make the color like uh, united on the lips. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the reason why they put it in the bottle, actually. But for me, uh, I would prefer to use uh, the colors that doesn't have any titanium dioxide, but they have more um, 
other ingredients, higher concentration basically of the pigments because you will have perfect health results. That's the first thing. You will have faster work. That's the second thing. And you know, you will not have any problems during the fading process, like over the years. Yeah. So that's all the advantage for me. And also there's a the titanium is still used in dark brow colors as well. And people yeah. will find that people will find that out when they get them lasered off. Oh yeah. Uh, the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> because I have people coming to me now who've had work done elsewhere on the brows, didn't like the brows, got them lasered. And actually the laser was just the start of another mm. really miserable journey because they got brows yeah. that like, they got them lasered, they turned red, they got the red out and then the neon yellow. And they're like, yeah. well, what do I do now? And literally, there's not a lot you can do apart from try and cover it. Yeah, that's that's just another problem. And like, if you look at it, like, um, if you look like far away to the future, not just the day that you put the pigment in the skin, but you also thinking about what will happen in the future, you should think twice about using the colors with titanium dioxide because it's impossible to remove them with the laser, forget it. And with the, for example, saline removal or other removals, it's like 50-50, you never know. And even if you lighten it, sometimes it doesn't always go. And so yeah. as much as you might be wanting those really opaque, heavy brows now, yeah. they won't yeah. age well. So Yeah, I, I think permanent makeup should be uh, more um, natural. <laughs> So we talked about um, education and I know that you're really keen because your pigments come with, like you you give people an educational um, platform as well with the pigments yes. that they know what they're using. So I think that that's really rare. It doesn't seem to come with a lot of people. Are tr it's all trial and error and they're just, you know, hoping these things will be okay. And, and you, you might not know the end results for years. Hmm. Like, I, I, I think it's important part of like even the selling the pigments, whatever brand I will sell, I will first do the test, I would test them, I would work with them before I would actually start to recommend them. And from that experience, I would, of course, like uh, recommend how to use how to use them properly, how to adjust them if they need to adjust. Uh, or not. And for skills pigments, I created also a PDF and online course that is for free. Mm -hmm. It's completely for free. Everybody can just sign up and that's it. They have immediate access. And uh, I think it is really important. Like if you buy, especially if you buy a new brand, new pigments, you need to know what to expect. You need to know how to work with them. So this is my theory. I do it for free. And um, because I, I want people to be satisfied with that product. So I believe they need to know how to work with it. It's like a manual. <laughs> but not just that. I mean, you are actually coming to visit me and we're going to do a yeah. pigmentology yeah. class in person. You're actually going to come and talk people through that and the mixing of them, how to use them. So I don't think that that just um, helps people with your pigments. I think it helps them with mm. full stop understanding them. And that understanding and that knowledge is the key to choice and to confidence in your work. Yes, the class that I do for pigmentology, uh, you can take that uh, knowledge and basically like take it to some other brands as well, because that is not just about one brand. It's like actually for every pigment out there. So I uh, in, in this particular class, I teach people um, how to read the pigments, uh, not just the color that you see, but also like the ingredients inside. And I think that's that's really important. And how and consider all of the things to the future, how that will heal. If the client will have some kind of problems, we are also talking about the allergies and the side effects because this is also something that people doesn't like to hear, <laughs> but it is it is there. So I I think it needs to be said out loud. So look like the class will be it will amaze you because it is very interesting topic. And mm, I have to say like. Most of the times people think it's not important, but it is. I think it's the most important. I think your yeah. coming here in your pigment knowledge is the, the most important because, I mean, obviously things like mapping is important and everything, but if you don't know what's going in, it, that's what's going into the people. <laughs> that's what's yeah. going yeah. in there. That's the most important thing and knowing, because otherwise you are just hoping. You're tattooing yes. and hoping and praying and just guessing. And guessing isn't something that we should be doing. We should be going yeah. into knowledge. And actually, you can be the best artist ever, 
but if if you are working incorrectly with the pigments or you have like terrible health results then it, it doesn't it doesn't mean anything because uh your clients will tell that they have bad work even though if you are the best artist out there and and like fresh work is amazing but the clients really care about health results and this is our um uh, advertisement also mm -hmm. yeah they're, they're walking around with your work on the face yeah. so it has to be it has to be great. So um, so that's the 30th of March over in the UK. You'll be flying over. So yeah. if you want to just leave, um, just comment and I can get in touch with the, the details of that because I'm thrilled for that. And it, I've been, I mean, I've, I've been alongside you at many conferences. So I know how incredible your knowledge is. And I'm just so excited that these people are going to be able to have this pigmentology class in the UK. I've never been in Manchester and around that area. So I'm excited to. <laughs> we will extend you all the um, all the hugest welcome of the north so I can't wait to have you I know already there's several artists that are really great artists that are already interested that are that are going to come along so um, we're going to have a fabulous time so comment below if you'd like any more interest uh, so any more information on Veronica's uh, pigmentology theory that she um she will let you know in a pdf or come and see us both in um in the UK in uh in 30th of March Saturday so. I'm, yeah I'm really excited so don't miss this chance because it's really low low cost price right <laughs> absolutely yeah we can't wait to have you because um I really do feel this is the knowledge that it is it's the not thing I get asked about the most on YouTube so it is the knowledge that people are most lacking mm. yeah and I, I will be happy to uh give you the knowledge because I think it's really really important and even though you think it's not and you, you, maybe you are satisfied with your pigments. Maybe you will be amazed like what's inside. Yeah. And I am going to leave it there because I have a 15 minute eyeliner booked in and I will be using my skills <laughs> pigment. And I'm telling you, I'm here to just say, she's right. You know, you absolutely can do an <laughs> eyeliner in 15 minutes. And I know I was talking to Victoria just the other day and she was going, I was numbing longer than I was tattooing. <laughs> Yes, that's true. That's true, actually. So uh, so I'm here to say that that does work. We just sit here going, my goodness, that stuff flies in. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to leave it there while I go off to do my eyeliner. And uh, thank you so much for joining me today. And I can't wait to see you um, in a month's time. <laughs> thank you for having me. And I'm so excited. <laughs>